Hey everybody, welcome to episode 5 of your Chia cryptocurrency tutorial series. Now this video is not going to be too much use if you're new, so make sure you watch the previous videos. This one's going to be about logs and troubleshooting and all that fun stuff. So let's get into it. We're going to first talk about how to make sure our plots are working. So the first thing, you want to make sure you add any plot directories. So if you have plots on your computer but they're not showing up here, then you can just add a plot directory and then they should show up. Now you will notice you get some basic troubleshooting such as plots failed to open one. We're gonna talk about that. But you can get a lot more information from the terminal using a command chia plots check. It's gonna go through your plots and see how they're looking. Now I'm zoomed in really, really far, but you can see it says warning one invalid plots found, one unopenable plots located at Caleb Curry desktop test.plot. So that was one I just forced by saying touch test.plot and obviously that's not a valid plot file so that's where this one here comes up so you might see this if you have any incomplete or invalid plots or you might see duplicate plots so yeah it might just be good to go through a chia plots check and it'll do some basic checking for you but overall mine looks good now there's also a log that you can access to see how things are working so let's clear out of this. And you can access the logs depending on which operating system, use whatever path it might be. But we first actually need to set a configuration as by default the log level is warning and we want that to be set to info. So what we're going to do is we're going to change directory into that Chia path and then into config. And from here we can open config.yaml. So I'm just going to open this up in code. And from here, you want to jump to the first occurrence of logging. And you'll see here that there's this log level info. You might have yours on warn, so go ahead and change that to info as so, and save. Now, from the terminal, we can change directory into the log directory. And there is a file in here called debug.log. You might see debug.log1 or 2, and those will be created as debug.log is filled. So similar thing here, I'm going to open that in Visual Studio Code. And I like Visual Studio Code because it's pretty much the same across operating systems. And before you set your log to info, you might just see errors, but as you set it to info, and you will see these consistent updates of what's going on with your node. And you can see the peak is continually updating as new blocks are being added, which another reason I love Visual Studio Code is it automatically updates that file as the file length increases. Now you'll notice it's auto scrolling for me, and this is not a default behavior, so I actually installed an extension for that. So you can go over here into extensions, and it is called auto scroll. The exact ID if you want to find it is this right here. So that'll get you the exact extension I'm using. And then you will just need to enable auto scroll. Now in this log, the most important thing I wanna call out is the seek time. So this here time, you can see these numbers are very, very low. However, if your computer is having any issues getting to the plot files, this time might be a lot longer. An example of when this might happen is if you're using a network attached storage device. Well, that might end up being a few seconds. I'd really try to keep this under three seconds, three to five seconds. If it goes above 30 seconds, which is a lot more, it can actually make any proofs you find invalid and you won't get any block rewards. So it's recommended that you keep it under three. So if you're seeing a much larger time, then you need to do some troubleshooting. What's going on? Why is it taking so long? Now there's various reasons this could happen. So as for the solution, I'm going to be telling you how you can get in touch with some experts at the end of this video. Now the other number you'll see here is this zero plots eligible for farming. Of all your plots, only certain ones are, are qualified to win a specific block. So as you get more plots, this number will go up. Maybe it'll be one, two, three, or even higher, depending on how many plots you have. And then of those few plots that were selected, they have a chance of actually winning and providing a valid proof. And then in that situation, you will confirm that block. Now another thing that I want to show you is the DB file. So Going back to the terminal, we can change directory back to mainnet, and in here there is a db directory, so you can cd into db, and there's a bunch of different database files here, the main one being the blockchain v1 mainnet SQL Lite. This is what is retrieved when you sync the database. So if you're having any weird issues, or you know maybe a plot NFT is not showing up properly, 
a brute force fix can be to shut down Chia and delete the database and then resync from scratch. This will trigger the same behavior as when you open Chia for the first time and it syncs from the very beginning. If you want to try it out but you're a little hesitant, not really sure, you could instead of deleting the database file, rename it or move it to a new location and then try it. Then you have that database backup if you need it. This is just the blockchain data. If you back up this blockchain, that doesn't mean your keys are backed up or anything like that. So you need to make it a point to write down those 24 words. So if you watch this video and you ran into any issues or you have more questions, let's talk about where you can get support. So step one is to read the documentation. The Chia docs here has a lot of good information on how to get started and a better explanation of the technical stuff behind what you're doing. So if you have any issues, I recommend reading through that first. But sometimes talking to a person is better. So if that's the case, go down to the bottom of the Chia website and there is a key base link and this is a chat community where you can ask all kinds of questions and talk to experts on how they have things set up. The Chia team is also in this key base, so you can often talk to people who actually help build Chia, which is pretty awesome. There are other unofficial support channels like Discord groups and websites that you can go to, and you can try those out, but I would recommend starting with Keybase. Another great website is Chia Forum. And if you're looking for even more resources, Chia Links is really great as well. So this is basically a combination of a bunch of different resources. So if you need farming solutions, then here are a bunch of different links that you can use. As for what you should learn next, well, I would recommend taking a look at the green paper and the business white paper to get a better understanding of the technology of Chia and their plan. Maybe taking some time to learn about cold wallets, which is a way you can protect your cryptocurrency by not exposing the wallet to the internet in any way. And in that situation, you would basically create the wallet offline and remove it before connecting to the internet. This will allow you to send Chia to that wallet without it having ever been exposed to the internet and is a great way to store Chia long term. Chia is also working on various solutions for protection of cryptocurrency similar to that, so we might explore those in the future. I would also suggest learning about tokens and NFTs, very cool things that you can do on the Chia network. And if you want to learn more about decentralized applications, then I encourage you to look into Chia Lisp. So you can find Chia Lisp at chialisp.com, which is their documentation, if you want to get started. So that's your introduction. Hopefully it got you started. If you have any suggestions on future content, please be sure to drop a comment below. Hopefully you are excited about this project, and I look forward to releasing any videos for you in the future. See you in the next one.